Today we're going to be talking about section 4.5, which is on solving quadratic equations by finding square roots. Our goal is to solve quadratic equations by doing exactly that and finding square roots. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about a couple of definitions. The radical in the symbol, the square root of 4, is the sine. So this is the radical symbol. The radicand is the number beneath the radical symbol. So in this case, um, 4 is the radicand. So the radical is the symbol, and most of the time right now it's going to be the square root. The radicand is the number underneath that. We're going to talk about two properties of radicals or of square roots, and the first one is the product property. It says that if we have the square root of AB, we can break that apart. So it's going to be the square root of A times the square root of B. So that's the square root of 20 equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Now notice in this case, we're only going to break these up if I pull out a factor that's a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square, so I'm going to pull that out because the square root of 4 is 2, and so that is 2 times the square root of 5. The quotient property says we can break these apart vertically. If I have the square root of a divided by b, I can write that as the square root of a over the square root of b. In the example, we have the square root of 2 over 25, so we can break that up as the square root of 2 over the square root of 25. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, so it's going to be the square root of 2 over 5. So we're going to talk about simplifying square roots. And you can use the properties above to simplify expressions containing square roots. And a square root expression is simplified if two things occur. First, you can never have a radicand that has a perfect square factor other than 1. So if you have a factor of a number in a, in a radical symbol that's not a perfect square, it's not simplified. Okay, So no radicand has a perfect square factor other than 1. And then also, you can never have a radical in the denominator. If you have a radical in the denominator, it is not simplified. So in A, we're going to pull out any factors of 75 that are perfect squares. So are there any factors of 75 that are perfect squares? And the answer is yes. 25 is a perfect square. And 25 times 3 is 75. So I can break these apart as the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. And the reason we do that is because this one is a perfect square, and the square root of 25 is 5. So it's 5 times the square root of 3. All right. For B, we're going to do this kind of the other direction. We have the square root of 7 times the square root of 35. We can multiply those together. All right, so if we multiply the square root of 7 times the square root of 35, we get 245. So 7 times 35 is 245. And so now we're going to break these apart. Are there any factors of 245? that are perfect squares, and 49 is 1, and it's 49 times 5 is 245, so this is the square root of 7, or 49 is 7, so it's 7 square roots of 5. C and D, we're going to use the quotient property, and so we're going to break this up into square root of 100 over the square root of 169, and the square root of 100 is 10, and the square root of 169 is 13, so our answer is 10 thirteenths. We're going to do the same thing in D. We're going to break this up. Square root of 11 over the square root of 144. Well, the, we can't simplify the square root of 11, so we leave that. But the square root of 144 is 12, so there's our answer for those. So go ahead and pause the video. You can do the guided practice questions quickly. And then once you are ready, go ahead and hit play. There are the answers to the guided practice questions. The next thing we're going to talk about is something called rationalizing the denominator. And that's the process of eliminating a rational expression in the denominator of a fraction by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by an appropriate radical expression. 
And so one that we're going to also look at when we get down to example 2b is the conjugate. And that's the expression a plus the square root of b and a minus the square root of b are conjugates. So in number example 2a, we're going to look at this one. Again, we're going to start by breaking this up. And this is going to be the square root of 2 over the square root of 15. Now, in all of the problems we've done so far, that square root of 15 has been a perfect square, and we've been able to go from there. However, in this case, that is not true. It is not a perfect square. However, if we multiply by whatever that is, the square root of 15 over the square root of 15, that's like multiplying by 1. If you multiply by 1, you're never changing anything. So if we do this, so the square root of 2 times the square root of 15 is the square root of 30. And the square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is the square root of 225. Well, now 225 is a perfect square. So the square root of 225 is 15. And so here is our answer. So in B, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. And so the conjugate is the opposite sign. So 5 plus the square root of 2. And again, if we do the same thing to the numerator and the denominator, we are not changing the problem. So it's like multiplying by 1. So in the numerator, we have to do the distributive property. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times the square root of 2 is simply that 4 times the square root of 2. In the denominator, we're going to have to FOIL these. 5 times 5 outside, or first, is 25. Insides is 5 squared to 2. Outsides, negative 5 squared to 2. And the last is negative square root of 4. So we're going to simplify that. We have 20 plus 4 over the square root of 2. Uh, 25. Now notice here, your outsides and your insides are going to cancel out. That is our goal for doing these. These are going to cancel out. And then we have minus the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So we're going to have 20 plus 4 square roots of 2 over 23. So when we look at this now, we have to determine, is there any common factors that we can reduce? And there's not. And so there is your answer. So that's rationalizing the denominator. In the first example, we just had to multiply by whatever the denominator was so that we could turn it into a perfect square. In example B, we had to multiply by its conjugate. Example 3, we're solving this. And again, this is a quadratic equation. We're solving a quadratic equation just like we have in the last two or three sections. But this time we're going to use square roots. This is probably the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation, but it doesn't always work. Now notice here, we only have an x squared term. There is no x term. The x term is not there. So we want to get the x squared by itself. So to do that, we're going to add 15 to both sides. So we're going to have 2x squared equals 80. Then divide by 2, x squared equals 40. So now you have x squared. So we've been using inverse operations. The inverse operation of addition is subtraction. Uh, inverse operation of multiplication is division. So now the inverse operation of squaring something is going to be to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now, any time you take the square root, you have to have a plus or minus. So we're going to write plus or minus, and we're going to go to the square root of 40. So we just took the square root of both sides. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 40, we're going to write the square root of 40. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. Are there any factors of 40 that are perfect squares? And the answer is yes. We can take a factor of 4 out. 4 is a perfect square, and it's 4 times 10. So this is going to give us plus or minus square root of 4 is 2 square root of 10. And so there's your answer for 
number three. Example four. When we look at example four, we are going to be looking for solutions to this equation. Again, our goal is always to get the x term by itself. Now notice this one is in a different form, but the same thing is true. We want to get the x by itself. So we're going to start by, well, let's rewrite this one. We're going to start by getting rid of the one-third. And to do that, we're going to multiply both sides by 3. Because now we're going to have x minus 4 squared equals 33. Okay, To get rid of that squared, you're going to take the square root of both sides. Well, the square root of x minus 4, parentheses squared, is simply x minus 4. The square root and the squaring of it, those things, cancel each other out. So that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of 33. Is there any factors of 33 that are perfect squares? The answer is no. There are no factors that are perfect squares. So we can't do anything to simplify that. Well, we still have to get the x by itself, so we have to add the 4. So this is going to be x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 33. So there is our answer. Now notice it's plus or minus. That means I have two answers. One of them is 4 plus the square root of 33. And the other one is 4 minus the square root of 33. That's what our plus or minus really means. So if we look at those, our answer should be D. So go ahead and simplify these expressions. Um, a 9 through 12 and 17 through 19. I will do all of them. Do whichever ones you would like to, um, just as long as you get some practice. Uh, go ahead and hit pause, and then you can hit play when you are ready. Here are the answer to some of these guided practice questions. I only did 13 and... 15 or 13 and 16 in the in that section because I ran out of room but so there's your answers we'll go down to 17 18 and 19 as well and again notice our goal is always to get the X when we're solving equations get the X by itself So the next thing we're going to talk about is modeling a dropped object. And here is the equation for a dropped object. H equals negative 16 T squared plus H naught. Where H is the final height in feet, T is the time, and H naught is the initial height. So all you're going to do is you're going to take... And you're going to plug your equation or your numbers into that equation. So it's going to be h equals negative 16 t squared plus h naught. You can plug in the numbers that you know. So if you drop an object off the roof of a building that's 240 feet tall, that means our initial height is 240. So that's what we put. Okay, the final height, well, it's going to hit the ground, so that's h is going to be 0. It's going to be negative 16t squared. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to solve this. And our goal is to solve for t. We want to get the t by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 240 from both sides. So it's going to be negative 240 equals negative 16t squared. Now we're going to divide both sides by negative 16. So t squared equals... We're going to take 240 divided by 16, and that's going to give us 15. And so now what we have to do again is take the square root of both sides. 
and the square root of t squared is t, and this is going to get be plus or minus the square root of 15. And so t is going to equal, well, and this is a real life situation, so what we're going to do is we're going to plug this in. We want to know what approximately that time is, and the square root of 15 is approximately 3.87. However, we have t equals plus or minus negative 3.87. Obviously, we can't have a negative amount of time. So we're going to say the object will hit the ground in about 3.87 seconds. So again, in this section, what we are doing is we are solving quadratic equations by taking the square roots. So simplifying radicals and finding square roots is something that you've done in the past. Some of these are a little complex, but most of the problems we're going to do are going to be similar to this in example 5 and similar to the examples that we did 17 and 18 and 19. So here is your homework assignment for section 4.5.